Uh, Alex, you've come out of the... Well, um, Alex, you watched the US press conference today. What would you say the US position is at the start of these talks? Uh, well, there, there are two major issues that I think were discussed um, in the press conference and that are really important at the Durban climate talks right now. Um, the first is the Kyoto Protocol, that's the uh, current um, emissions treaty that we have right now, and whether there's going to be another successor treaty to the Kyoto Protocol that's legally binding. Um, the second issue is the Green Climate Fund, the fund that was set up last year in Cancun, and whether they'll actually be able to operationalize that fund and whether they will have um, some money that actually flows through the fund. Okay, so let's start with the Kyoto Protocol. What did the uh, U.S. negotiators have to say on this? Uh, well, first of all, the U.S. isn't actually part of the Kyoto Protocol. It was never actually ratified in the Senate, although it was signed. Um, so it's not bound by the Kyoto Protocol, and the U.S. negotiators have basically said they're not interested in joining it, and whatever happens in the negotiations um, on that side, really none of our business. Uh, we can't really influence the outcome, essentially. Okay. But there's um, people are working towards a, a new treaty or a, a bigger treaty. Uh, that's the hope. What do the U.S. Yes. What do the U.S. want out of that? Um, well, the U.S. has put up some preconditions to whether they would become part of a future legally binding treaty that a lot of developing countries and emerging economies like China and India have basically set our red lines and that um, that's not the kind of treaty that they can join. And so there's kind of an impasse there about um, what that treaty would look like. Two different visions. Okay. Um, where, where's the impasse? What, what, are the, what are the red lines that they're, they're not prepared to cross? Um, I think essentially... Um, the issue is that there are emitters, uh, developed countries that are historical emitters and they're uh, mostly responsible for um, the greenhouse gases that are currently in the atmosphere. So, you know, the United States, the EU, um, historically responsible for climate change. On the other hand, there are these emerging economies, especially China, Brazil, South Africa, India, um, who are developing and emitting more and more. China is actually the number one greenhouse gas um, emitter today. Um, and so those countries are saying, we're not historically responsible for this, we're still developing, um, dealing with a lot of issues around poverty. We shouldn't have to um, agree to legally binding cuts that are as large as these historically um, responsible emitters like the United States. And the U.S. is saying, well, that's true, but you're also emitting most of the greenhouse gases, or a large majority of the greenhouse gases that are in uh, the atmosphere today, if you take all of those emerging economies together. Um, and so a treaty wouldn't really be meaningful if they didn't join it. So we need to join together. Um, what are the timescales people are looking at in terms of you know, actually working out a deal on this? Well, I think one of the disappointing things, actually, for a lot of people coming out of the U.S. press conference was that um, the head of the U.S. delegation, Jonathan Pershing, mentioned the date 2020 a lot as um, the time when a new treaty would be agreed upon and would come into force. And that's obviously a long distance away. Kyoto Protocol is going to expire at the end of 2012. And so there would be a huge gap in between those times um, where there would be no legally binding treaty. That's really helpful. What about the Green Climate Fund? You mentioned that was one of the other important yeah. issues here, and uh, the U.S. has come in for some stick already as a potential barrier to that moving yeah. forward. What's happening? Um, well, over the past year, so as I said, in Cancun, uh, negotiators essentially agreed that we should set up a Green Climate Fund, and here's a committee, the Transitional Committee, that's going to work out the details of the governing board and that kind of thing where the money will come from. Um, so that committee has been working over the past year on setting up the rules, um, and there was some controversy. It got started kind of late. Um, and so finally, towards the end of the year, they did manage to put a text together that they were then able to submit to the Conference of the Parties, which is what is meeting right now in Durban. Um, the problem was that two of the members, the United States and Saudi Arabia, um, didn't actually agree with the text. They didn't block the text, which could, could be seen as a positive sign, I guess. But on the other hand, um, I think there's some concern that they could then reopen that text here in Durban and there could be some controversy and they might act not actually be able to operat operationalize the fund here. Okay. Alex, thanks very much. It's been really helpful and we'll look forward to uh, following it later this week.